The show is brought to you by our generous patrons at patreon.com slash falloutlorecast. Robots Radio presents the Fallout Lorecast. Welcome to the Fallout Lorecast, a place for the Fallout community to come together to explore the boundaries of our knowledge about the world of Fallout. It is time, friends. It is not only time for the Fallout Lorecast, but it is time for the first official Fallout Lorecast of 2021. We are oh, here yeah. on a Tuesday night because Monday night didn't work out for us, but we're here on a Tuesday night. Normally, we're here Monday nights, and I am your host, Tom or Robots, and this is my co-host, Lainey. Lainey, how's it going? It's going good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Man, this is going to be an awesome episode because, get this. It's been almost a year since Wastelanders came out. Wastelanders came out, what, February last year? And I've been holding off on doing too much of the uh, Fallout 76 lore. That's something I've been waiting on. But we're now on year three. We're starting year three. We've got a whole bunch of lore to dig into Fallout for Fallout 76 and some very interesting characters. So I figured we could start this off doing some character studies on some of the individuals that we know from Fallout 76. So... To start this off, I want you guys to get in the mindset, and this is one of the things I want to do a little bit more in this year again. It's something that I did originally, and then we kind of changed up the formula a little bit, but I'm going to bring Lainey, Lainey in, in on this with me a little bit. I want you to get in the mindset of being somebody who is in charge of the lives of many other people. I want you to think what that kind of pressure is like. Now imagine that you are a responsible person, you're an intelligent person, and you are privy to knowledge about things that most other people will never know. And then you are put in charge of the potential of reaching certain goals for yourself. Some dreams could possibly come true, but you have to make certain kinds of sacrifices in order to do that. And in the end, you make your decisions, you have to live with your decisions, and of course, the world falls apart. We know that the world falls apart. It's fallout, right? What would you do in those situations? And I want you to get in that mindset as we go through this character profile. And let's just kick it off with that. This is about the overseer of Vault 76. And Lainey, Lainey, as, as usual, has done some research here, and she's going to be presenting a good amount of this stuff, and I'll be commenting on it as we go. Lainey, why don't we, for the first half of this episode, talk about some of her background and stuff, and in the second half, we can talk about some of the events that happened during the game. So if people want to skip over the events of Fallout 76, because they haven't dug into that part of it yet, then they can listen to the first half, get a little bit of background of who she is, but not actually have everything spoiled for them. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. All right, so why don't you kick us off? Who Who is the Vault Overseer? Do we even know her name? So, no, we don't actually know her name, which is pretty strange now that you do get to meet her. Yes, um, that is super she, weird. She's one of the few characters in the game that we don't know their name. We even we right. learn the names of people who look mysterious, like the Machinist in Fallout 4. We're like, who is this? And at some point, we learn who it is. You know, we get, the, get her name and who she is. But we don't ever really get a chance to even know the name of the overseer, even though we talked to her in the game. Yeah, it's it's kind of strange, but uh, that doesn't mean that she doesn't really have a character. You know, there's actually a lot of information about her. In fact, the whole Wastelanders DLC is about her <laughs> or at in least the, the base game. The first, yeah, the first half of it is. Yeah, yeah like she, she's yeah. definitely the, uh, the main quest giver after you go to um, the first place you go. I don't want to ruin too much of it for, for other people, but you do come across her and you do end up learning more about her. She's also one of the main uh, threads through the original content for Fallout 76 when it comes to finding the holotapes and following the trail that she went on. So she's a very important character. And you can tell that once she opened up the vault and let everyone out like she was supposed to do, that she had some um, some things to figure out. And we'll, we'll get into that. So what else do we know about her? So... I mean, we know a bunch of things about her background because they're all things that she shares in the holotapes, right? And so we know lots of things about uh, people she used to know, but even what she was like as a child. Um, and so I, the, the easiest place to start this is with um, 
kind of what her family life was like. Mm -hmm. So she was an only daughter um, and she had what uh, she describes as being like the American ideal at the time of just like mom, dad, family. They're pretty like they're well off. They're doing okay. She has a great education, right? Nuclear family. Yeah. Things things are pretty safe. Things are okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with that in mind, she put a lot of work into her schooling. You know, she kind of continued that image of like straight A's. She was uh, the troop leader for her pioneer scouts troop. She, um, I don't know. She describes herself as having spent a lot of time in the library as a teenager, mm-hmm. um, well especially read. after her. Yeah, go ahead. Right, especially after her mom passes, and so a major event in her background is that her mom, well, both her parents actually pass before she's even the overseer. So her mom passes when she's in a teenager, and um, she dives really deeply into her studies. You know, spends all of her time at the library. And the only thing that really brings her out of that, um, despite her father trying his best, <laughs> is uh, this man, Evan, that her mom had introduced uh, her to when she was younger. Mm-hmm. And so her mom was a miner and died in a mining accident. But while she had worked there, there was a boy who started working in the mines that was only a year older than the overseer. And so she introduced to them. And when the mom passed, this guy started like kind of checking in on her. Right. And they're about the same age. And so eventually they end up in a relationship. But what he would do is he would bring her lunch every day at school in the library so she could just eat there and read her books, which is really cool. Which is super sweet. So like, it's a whole like, yeah. hey, you don't have to even leave the library. I'm just going to bring you lunch every day so I get a chance to yeah. talk to you, you know, but then you don't have to take a break. It helps us both out. That kind of thing. Right. That's that's like kind of a typical romantic like I care about you. I'm getting something out of this because I get to see you. But you also are going to appreciate it kind of thing that people do. Right. So they end up sticking together for pretty much all of her backstory. Like this is Evan. I don't know if I gave him a name. Yeah. You said, you said the name Evan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, he's around for like the rest of this. Um, They, from this point, you know, things are pretty normal until one day she goes to a career fair and this is where she meets vault tech. Um, And basically the impression that they gave her was that by working with them, she could kind of make a difference, giving people safe and fulfilling lives, you know, making mm-hmm. the world a better place. Right. That's exactly what she wanted. Um, and so with her grades that she already had that were great, she easily got accepted, accepted into vault Tech University. Um, and this was really exciting for lots of reasons. One of them being, you know, she got accepted to school, like very exciting moment. Um, but also it was really important to her, I think, just because her father wanted her around to stay local. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it was really yeah. cool that she ended up um, getting to go to vault And not only that, it was like, not only did she go to school locally, but she ended up working locally as well, right? She's the overseer for Vault 76. This is her home, um, which is really neat. So she went to the university, right? She uh, got a four-year degree in nuclear fission and then honors in the overseer track. So if any of you have played the game, you know that that is something that they can do. In order to become an overseer, you have to go through a series of educational overseer things. Right. And deal Um, with dilemmas that could possibly happen in a vault and solve (laughs) solve problems between groups of people and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, but she did great, right? And so she... She, you know, you know, she graduated from vault Tech University while she was going to school there. I believe that she worked for the vault Tech Agricultural Research Center, mm-hmm. which is really neat. So she was already working with them. Like she was in this, you know, for the long run. They were like, this is the school I want to go to. This is who I want to work for. She really believed that they were doing the right thing. Right. Um, right. So, and- so to, to jump in here. So as kind of a summary for this early part of her life, getting into college, basically, she's the kind of person who focuses on her studies, but also very early mm-hmm. on showed leadership qualities in some of these clubs and groups she was she was part of. She is exactly yeah. the kind of person that many of these universities are looking to court in order to get into their programs by giving them scholarships and things. The kinds of people who sit down, they know how to get work done, they study hard, they work hard at what they do. They show leadership potential. So she sounds from the very beginning like the right kind of person to be a vault overseer. Right. Yeah. This seems like, you know, something that she would be great at. 
you know, she has all this experience already and vault tech notices. So they basically fast track her into an overseer position. Normally people who are chosen for overseers are much more experienced, um, older, and she was very young. Um, and this actually, her age ends up being a thing later on too. Uh, her being that young, kind of effect, how it affected her time in the vault. Mm -hmm. um, but at this point, you know, she has just graduated. It's really awesome, you know, and unfortunately her dad passes. Yeah. And so now she's lost her other parent and that's really tough, but uh, good news is already happening. She found out that she was going to be in vault 76. Um, she, got to, she gets to stay in her home state, you know, things are still looking up even though, you know, tragedy has struck. And in light of the good news, Evan also proposes to her, mm -hmm. which she happily accepts because at this point she doesn't realize that that might be an issue. You know, she's like, I, you know, I love this person. We're going for it. Yeah, you're foreshadowing and, something here that might be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> now, remember, remember, we have we have two very different people here. We have a, a young woman who is very much leadership college bound, highly intelligent, um, book smart. And then we have Evan, who is a miner. He works in the mines and that's what his family does. That's what he ended up doing. And so you can already see here the beginning of something that um, they, they they're coming from two different worlds right and i mean love sees no boundaries right like that's fine you can fall in love with somebody regardless of what they do for a living or or how smart they are or whatever like you know like you love somebody you love somebody but there is a distinct difference in their their how they make their livelihood their personalities those kinds of things yeah and that unfortunately becomes something that's very important <laughs> so um, as we know, she's going to be an overseer. And so she starts learning more about vault -Tec and the kinds of things that they're doing and the kinds of things that they're planning to do mm -hmm. and, uh, starts to realize that maybe, maybe it's not the best. She starts learning about some of the experiments. They start really opening up to her. And when they first start doing that, Evan, uh, who she's sharing this information with, says that she has to tell people, right? Like this can't all be good. These yeah, experiments she, can't all be good. Right, right. She has she has moral issues with some of the some of the information that she's discovering. Uh as she's right. getting, you know, further, further and, and deeper into the information of what is going on in Vault Tech. She starts to kind of uncover some things on her own. And uh she brings it to the Vault Tech leadership who basically turns it around on her and they frame it as if they're the good guys. They frame right. it as a, as in like this this perspective of like well we have to do these drastic things in order to save humanity which they might very well believe but of course it opens up the the typical issue of do, do the uh do the means um justify the ends right like is it okay to do terrible things if the ends are ultimately good or is it not you know it's the batman problem right like if I kill someone in order to save everybody, am I just as bad as the bad guy because I murdered someone, right? Ultimately, does it justify the right. Um, So she starts having a moral issue with this. And, and of course, like you said, she, she brings this up to Evan and says, hey, I think maybe there's some issues here. And he's like, well, you need to talk to them about it. And then they kind of turn it around on her. And then she goes, okay, right. well, you guys, I mean, being young and naive about things, and she's got a good head on her shoulders, but also she's trusting of these people who seem like intelligent people who are justified in, in what they're doing. Right. So she, of course, um, I mean, as as is obvious, continues working with them, you know, despite despite anything that's questionable, she's gotten over it. Um, and so she eventually at this point uh, is about to join the, you know, Vault 76, and actually become a part of it. They see that like war is happening. The bad things are coming. It's a topic that's actually being talked about. And she realizes that. um there is space for her and Evan to go into the vault together. She can mm -hmm. request an exception with him as her spouse, but the kinds of people that are staying in this vault are meant to reclaim Appalachia, right? And so there are a lot of people who are either very experienced or hardworking in different interesting areas that are supposed to bring a society together. Mm -hmm. And she realizes that unfortunately a minor isn't necessarily what they need. 
And so she makes this really frustrating decision to uh, let Evan go, which, of course, you know, in, in the scheme of things, what is logical probably makes sense. Um, but it's very sad. And when she talks about it, she is upset about it as well. Yeah. Well, um, look, uh, the other thing uh, I think is really interesting about this is that her mother introduced her to Evan. Right. Right. And so in some ways, her relationship and clinging on to Evan, I'm sure emotionally is also connected to her mother because we do right. that. And you have to think she's lost to everyone so far. Right. She right. doesn't have any siblings. Right. So this to, is it. to give up, she's lost her parents. Evan is the closest person she has. And to make that kind of sacrifice means that she must have genuinely believed it was the right decision, even if she had to sacrifice that relationship, uh, which is is extremely tragic being as we understand what's going on with vault tech but at the same time she thought it was the right decision right she thought this was for the greater good so she you know she took that chance and um i mean at this point she's an overseer um so we can we can talk a little bit if you want about what it's like i mean what that job really entails there's not yeah. a whole lot of yeah, info. Yeah. it's uh yeah, yeah. i mean okay so <laughs> It's she's going to be there for 25 years, right? That's the big thing. This vault is only staying there for 25 years and then they're going out. And so the whole point of it is to prepare the people who are in it, who a lot of them are older people because they thought that would be helpful to pass down their knowledge, um, to prepare them to enter a world where they do not know what has happened. Mm -hmm. As far as they know, it's, it's a wasteland. Like what, you know, who knows what's going on out there right, right. and they have to be ready for it and to make it work. Um, so it's her job to protect these people and make sure that they're actually working together and that this is a, you know, a feasible thing to do. So that's most of, I mean, that's most of her job. The mm -hmm. only part that and I foreshadowed this earlier a little bit that, uh, kind of gets in the way because she's good at it. She's obviously experienced is that she, I mean, I blanked. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My whole brain just <laughs> You know what I think is um, you know what I think is funny about the whole thing. I'll give you a minute to to regather your thoughts. Um it's what's so funny about this is that she spent 25 years preparing people to go back into Appalachia and be prepared, right? To resettle right. Appalachia regardless of what's out there. Monsters, uh radiation, more bombs dropping, communists, who knows, right? Nobody knows what's out there. And what she sends out there from the vault is us. And yeah. what we do <laughs> in the wasteland is ridiculous. Like we were it's like, this crazy. is the idea behind this is that we were given 25 years of training to be able to go out in this wasteland and resettle everything. So what, what do we do? We run around and we shoot stuff and we, we find all the funny outfits we can have and we have weird parties and we go wash, <laughs> worship the Mothman and like, and some of us go solve the scorched plague and you know, like follow the tracks of the response in order to try to make the wasteland a better place. Some of us do that stuff, but then when we're not doing that stuff, we're doing the most ridiculous things. We're having fashion shows and like reenacting and that, stuff. And that totally comes up later too. She has an opinion on all of that. Right, right. Which is so funny because she sees it and she's like, this is awful. Right, right. And on top of um, it, we, we start launching all of these nukes onto right. our own land, which is absolutely ridiculous it's crazy all she wants is to just make it better <laughs> right right it's awful so i i, I love um, i love that juxtaposition in there like we have this very capable woman who's highly intelligent training us to do these things and that's what we leave yeah. and go do yeah i remembered what i was saying earlier in the vault i i keep bringing up ages it's because she was so young she had just graduated college and they put her in charge of this whole vault full of people that right. were supposed to continue off into the wasteland people didn't like that yeah oh yeah yeah people in the vault that, she with that were i mean just just prejudiced against her because she was younger right even yeah, though she was totally and, qualified yeah and probably a woman and there's people who do that too you know like it totally makes sense but it, but think yeah. about it like i mean you're you're 20 you know like i remember being in my 20s uh, it didn't matter how capable i was like i graduated top of my department in college i was like i'm a smart guy I, I work hard. I can get things done, but it didn't matter because there was somebody else who had 10, 20, 30 years more experience than you who thought you were an idiot. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> just like, give me a chance. Like, yeah, I don't have the same experience you do, but I can apply myself like 
I'm pretty good at overcoming obstacles and figuring stuff out. Just give me a chance, you know? Um, so yeah, that is, that is very frustrating. Yeah. By the time we meet her in Fallout 76, she's got to be in her like what mid to late forties at the oldest. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, 25 years has passed. Yeah, 46, 47, which isn't that old, you know, like, it's not like we're going you know, to run into her when she's 80. Like, yeah, she's still, you know, she's, she's a middle-aged adult who's very capable still, you know? Yeah. 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 But it ends up okay. She ends up bonding with the people in the vault as if they were family. The dwellers in her are very close, which is part of why it's so funny that we go out in the wasteland and blow things up. <laughs> and just drop nukes on everything. <laughs> yes, it is. It is pretty, pretty funny. Uh, Crystal in, in chat says uh, she looks like she's 60, but it's probably the hair. Yeah, it's because she has uh, white hair. Uh, but you look at her character model and she doesn't look that old, like her face and her skin mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, well, Lainey, is this a good place to take a break and then come back and talk yeah. about the, uh, the actual in-game yeah. stuff that we come across? Yeah, All right. it's perfect. Well, before we do that, I want you guys to think about this. I want you, like I was saying at the beginning, put yourself in her shoes. What would you do? <laughs> and I specifically... What would you do if you left the vault and trained all these people and they went out into the wasteland and did, they did all this wacky stuff? How would you handle that? Like you were their leader for 25 years and they go out in the world and start dropping bombs. What would you do about that? All right, let's move to the middle of the show. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. So thank you to all of our patrons from the bottom of our hearts is that a, that's a thing people say right thank you from the bottom of our hearts you guys are absolutely amazing you have been supporting the show some of you from very very early on and you help make sure that we can keep this going and it's very very much appreciated we've got some new people who signed up over the last month and i'm going to be shouting out some of those names i think i went through everybody's did i do everybody's name last time did i do that i did that on some of the shows laney do you remember that um I don't remember. You don't remember. I don't remember either. Uh, I left. Uh, oh, that's right. You, you had to leave. You had to leave. Um, yeah. Some of the shows I actually shouted everybody out. Um, I don't know that I did that. But in December, we had a number of new people. Uh, Alkaline1634, Anthony M, Justin S, who you're going to hear about again in a minute. Um, let's see. Anybody else? I think that was it for December. But thank you. Thank you to all of our new subs. And... Uh, everybody who's a part of this and also to those of you who tune in live and subscribe to the Twitch channel that that also helps support us. Thank you for that as well. So I want to go over real quick and we're going to do this in the middle of the show from now on our Sentry Bot um, subscribers. So these are our tier five or tier six subscribers. So thank you to Amelia R, Justin S again and Matt B for being Sentry Bots tier five subscribers. You guys are amazing thank you very 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 much and if you're interested in helping out support the show go check out patreon.com slash fallout lorecast you can get episodes a day early ad free episodes you even get it i don't i don't bring this up enough um tier two and tier three or tier three plus subs get discounts percentage discounts to the store so if you want to buy any of our shirts you get discounts on that stuff you get um tier four Members can join us at the end of every month for our chat and talk about whatever topic we're talking about each month. And you, I mean, there's so many different things you can get. So go check that out. And thank you again to all of you. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. All right. Lainey seems to be having some connection issues, but she's back. Lainey, what are we talking about here? We, we have everybody in the vault and then Reclamation Day happens, right? And that was the big... Hullabaloo when the when Fall 76 came out. Reclamation Day, send them out into the world. Everybody's going out. What happens then? So the overseer actually leaves a couple hours earlier than the vault dwellers do. Um, and after leaving, she has already been given instructions separate of necessarily what the people already dwelling in the vault were also told. These are these are unique to her because she's very important. She's the overseer. So she gets to secure three nuclear silos from sites Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, which ABC. Um, and she had to do this even if it meant actively betraying the United States government and the military, which is kind of nuts because vault Tech was just like, this is, this is it. This is your job now. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's crazy, right? Like, yeah, you are, your job is now to betray the government of the United States. Yeah. 
Let's just take a moment and think about that. Okay, <laughs> we'll go on. <laughs> so on this journey that she goes on to reclaim, you know, these nuclear weapons, she also uh, does a few other things. And so she leaves her holotapes around for you to find. And she tells you about not only this journey, but the places she stopped along the way um, and her stories of the past. And so these are really fun to listen to. And I have a synopsis of them, but they're better to listen to in the game. So I highly recommend actually. Yeah, that's fine. We don't, we don't need to go through every single one of the hall tapes. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I don't have them listed like that. I just have like mm -hmm. the key points of like what she did. Okay. Um, so yeah, so play it yourself. <laughs> Please, it's fun. Um, so yeah, so while she was free of the vault, she took time to see what was left of her home, the places that she was familiar with. This was her home state. She, you know, it was really important to her to really see what was happening. And so uh, the first thing she did in order to try and aid settlers trying to navigate this new world, um, she set up her camp in like a pretty easy to reach spot on purpose so people could get from it, which is probably something that you did if you played Fallout, uh, Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. um, you run to her camp pretty early and uh, she leaves that there. She decides that it's just open for anyone and she leaves. Us, I think her first holotape is there and then um, or a note or I don't remember. <laughs> um, and she eventually, you know, she's out exploring and she encounters her first scorched, which was a big surprise <laughs> to her. Yeah. Not something yeah. that she had expected. And so she started looking for the responders because she found evidence that they might be able to figure something out. She saw that they were, you know, in the area, their signs out saying mm -hmm. to join them. Yeah. So she goes radio, and she radio signals, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. 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 So um, she goes and she does all the responders, you know, training and whatnot and joins their ranks, even though she cannot find them. Um and decides to use that information to, you know, go against the Scorch to see what was happening. But of course, this was not enough. You know, the responders only knew so much, and so this led her in the right direction. Um, she decided to go. She decided to go to the Morgantown area, mm -hmm. where um, she was disappointed to find that the airport had been destroyed by Scorch beasts, and of course, all the Scorch that are also over there. Yeah. Um, and so this was one of the first times that she saw something that she was familiar with that was like Being genuinely destroyed. yeah like <laughs> yeah. it did not look the same anymore you yeah. know um it's a, i mean it's an airport <laughs> yeah yeah um, she's probably familiar with it i mean many of us who have local airports who have done any traveling at all know what the airport's like you have to navigate yeah. the airport you know <laughs> um so she learned uh from seeing the scorched there and kind of like you know, examining them, taking what she could, uh, and other things she had learned from the responders. She realized that the plague is essentially, um, well, the symptoms essentially are just you burn from the inside out. And it starts on the inside, and you slowly go crazy, and eventually you turn into this fragile, petrified corpse. You know, you, know you, yeah. you walk up to them and you touch them and they fizzle. Um, yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> so, a, um, uh, it's like when you, when you have like a bonfire. And certain logs will still retain kind of their shape, but they'll be like really, really fragile. And it was just kind of the ash in the shape of what the log used to be like. And then you poke it with a stick and the thing just kind of falls apart. Yeah, that's what it reminds yeah. me of. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is just like that, except a human. It's so it's not fun to think about. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was around this time that she learns about the fire breathers and mm -hmm. decides that finding them might actually lead somewhere. And so she heads towards Charleston, uh, where she thinks she can find out more. And this is where she ends up finding her ex fiance, Evan. And Evan is now a scorched. Oh, man. Can you imagine <laughs> the guilt? Can you imagine the guilt of like, hey, I had to. I had to leave you and now this happened to you and there was a chance it wouldn't have if I stayed with you. It was a low chance, but we might have gotten into vault 111, right? Like that was a thing or was it 101? 101. They might have gotten into vault 101, uh, but he was low on the list. Mm. It was, yeah, it was vault 101 that, that he potentially could have gotten into with her, um, in which case they both would have been safe. We know what happens to vault 101. But 
Nope. Nope. That's not what happens. I just can't. Can you imagine that? She must have been like so torn up. And then just just the pain of seeing somebody you care about turned into this terrible suffering monster. Right. Which also she had to decide what to do with. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, she does not kill him. She ends up locking him in a basement. Um, which is a choice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so she finds him, she, he locks him in a basement on Mount Blair and eventually uh, makes her way to the top of the world where she meets uh, Rose <laughs> and disagrees with Rose about everything <laughs> because Rose is a raider. And so um, she tries to like learn more about the Scorched from her and of course Rose quips back with like a little like, you know, you do something for me, I'll do something for you and the overseer's not about it. And so she leaves. Mm -hmm. um, and then she encounters uh, the free states or what's left of them. And also not a huge fan, right? They're anarchists and she's not a huge fan of that. <laughs> but <laughs> she, you know, sticks around trying to learn something from them and uh, hits a dead end. And so at this point, she decides to, she's got to do something else, right? And she's heard about the Brotherhood of Steel. And she decides right. that Taggarty's, she wants to... Taggarty's Brotherhood of Steel. This is before yeah. the... Re so, so for people who are joining in the game now, and you have the Brotherhood of Steel re-emerging in Appalachia, that is a group from the West Coast. Before that happened, and if you go back to the episode where we talk about Taggarty's Thunder, um, there was a group run by a woman named Taggarty who took a... Basically, it was a squad of U.S. soldiers and um, had connection with... Maxon over on the West Coast via radio and was able to basically found a group of the Brotherhood over in Appalachia, but they don't really survive. So, um, but that's who, that's who uh, the overseer is talking to here. Right. So she uh, goes to investigate the Brotherhood of Steel, uh, finds out that they've left and, or aren't there anymore. And, um, decides that she's just going to complete their automated training and become a soldier. Mm -hmm. So, because they're, you know, connected to the military in this way. Right. And so she goes through and becomes a private. Uh, she jokes that she doesn't know if she should go by private overseer or overseer private. She Because like, we still don't know her name. Private? Maybe her right. name is the overseer. <laughs> so she's private overseer. <laughs> private overseer. That's it. It's that simple. Um, <laughs> and so she becomes a private and, uh, he does this to try and access locked areas of the base, um, but she's not able to access certain areas because her clearance is very low. So um, she decides to, you know, she continues the training. She goes to the Allegheny Asylum to try and learn to, is that how you pronounce that? Asylum? Allegheny. Oh. Uh, yeah, is it a f sound because it's G-H? I don't know. Allegheny? 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 I don't know. Someone let us know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about the pronunciation at all. Um, and so she goes there because they had a base set up there and wants to learn more, but she gets locked out of a... Um, oh, no, wait. She doesn't get locked out of it. She gets locked out of something else. She makes it through the elevator now that she's a private mm -hmm. to learn more stuff. Um, right. And she learns what they know and what they observed and basically comes to the conclusion that um, she knows why the different groups in the wasteland did not work out uh in the 25 years that they'd been there mm -hmm. and so this goes for brother of steel uh free states the responders the raiders you know everyone why are they all failing and she believes it's because none of them have tried to work together they group up in such a way that they can start taking care of themselves and then they cut each other off they divide and they're yeah. too afraid to work together against their common threats so she wants to make sure that with the new settlers that are coming, that that does not happen anymore. Um, and so at this point, upon learning everything she's ha she can about the Scorched and the Wasteland since she's been gone, um, she starts on her task trying to uh, go against government wishes <laughs> again. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Claiming the nukes, um, yeah. So she, she goes and she can't because she gets locked out because she does not have a high enough clearance because she's only a private. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, at this point, you uh I mean that's that's the end of that journey. Uh you can encounter her at her home. Um, so once she gives up on 
all of this because she can't do anything about it anymore. She can't move any farther up in the ranks of the Brotherhood of Steel without actual people there training her. Mm -hmm. Um, She goes back to... Is it... The city, the little city she's in. She go to, yeah. She she puts her camp in Flatwoods, right? And then she puts or like near Flatwoods, mm-hmm. and then then she is she near Morgantown? I can't remember. Uh, um, yeah, she's up in that area. She's in the forest. She's in like the uh, south. She's southeast of Vault seventy six. I'm bad with names, so now you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, we'll pull anyway. up a map and look. Um, <laughs> she has a home. She has a home. She she that you can visit. Right, right. And she keeps it pretty cleaned up, even though there's like monsters like right out her front door. Yeah, I don't know. How she, I don't know how she does that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. So at this point, uh, you can meet her, and she will ask you to help her in you know all the, with the things that she's learned and making the world a better place because that's all she has ever wanted um and she will then express to you that she's disappointed in the way that everyone's been treating the wasteland yeah specifically <laughs> and, nuking everything yeah <laughs> she's like she's it's it's bad especially of course the people that she has trained herself that are just we're going wild out there um and so uh she'll ask you to help with the inoculation of the uh, raiders and the settlers, mm-hmm. right? To try to make sure that nobody else can get the scorched plague. And so once you do that, if you do that, uh, you are then asked to go with her to vault University. Yeah. Where and this you'll... part's pretty cool because she went to vault University. Yeah. Like, oh, it's awesome. You're going back to her as <laughs> she's an alumni, which is really cool. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so you can go with her and she'll talk to the professor bot who, who's mm-hmm. there, I yeah. guess. Also talk to her and doesn't like her. <laughs> yeah, he's super stingy on like helping you out. He's like, "Well, yeah. there's nothing I can do to help you unless you're uh, an alumni of the, right. you know." And you're like, "Oh God, okay." Yeah. Well, it's not even that because she is an alumni. She's like, "Well, I, I'm an alumni. Why can't you talk to me?" And he's like, "We need a new graduating class." And she's like, "Why?" Right. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> you like you why? yourself have to be the the alumni, right? Because he's like, "You right. need to be graduating, not her." And she's like. Ah, whatever okay <laughs> so you have to go through the overseer training in order right. to graduate right uh which is fun so they have a vault set up it's like a fake vault that you can go in they set up a, some sort of social scenario some kind of something is wrong in this case mm-hmm. uh, all these mr handies are, are zooming yeah. around doing their like so, work things it's so awesome because all the mr handies like are playing characters right so it's it's great um and you have to figure out what happened and then resolve it. And if you do it, then you graduate and they give you access to a private area of Baltic University. And if things go a certain learn... way, you end up having to blow them up. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Yeah. You can actually have to fight them. Like, yeah, there's a situation <laughs> where, who is it? I, I should have looked this up ahead of time. Uh, but you pick like one guy as like it comes down between these two people who are you going to trust and you call one of them out and i think if it's like the less it's like i don't know i don't know which option it is i don't remember it's been a little while but i believe they get upset and then they attack you (laughs) and then you end up fighting them yeah yeah i didn't know that i think i've done it maybe i've only done it one way maybe i've done it two ways i had to do that quest Mm -hmm. three times from start to finish because the it, first like, time crashed out on you or something so, so the first time i did it and then i played some more stuff and then when i got off it's like it never it didn't know it was done it didn't know it was done and so when yeah. i went back in it started me back over so then i did it again and mm-hmm. it crashed right at the end mm-hmm. and still didn't save any of it yeah so I had to yeah do it again. <laughs> yeah I've, I've had to do parts of it again because i i exited in the middle and it didn't it's yeah. like it's like the um the time between the two points where it knows that there's something actually that has changed in the quest line is fairly long so yeah. you can't quit out once you've talked to the professor professor bot until you go through all the stuff and then talk to him again i think yeah kind of how it goes yeah yeah it's it was yeah it's <laughs> frustrating um but it's all on stream too that was it was like <laughs> two separate streams of me going through the same quest mm-hmm. um oh well <laughs> oh well um but yeah, so you you get access because the professor bot is happy to have a new graduating class of one. And um, you go in and the overseer is like, we're finding out what's in Vault 79. And like, here's information. Oh my gosh, it's gold. 
it's all the United States gold reserves are in Vault 79. Whoa. And so, yeah. <laughs> so then you're like, ah, I, I see. It's when I did it, I thought it was funny because like I, I guess the value of gold doesn't change, but we already give value to things that aren't like that, like money or like caps. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is the value of gold now? Right. Well, and, <laughs> and some characters debate that, right? Like they're, and this is, this is a much bigger question uh, and topic, but you come across other characters who are like, screw that. What's gold worth? It's only worth what people think it's worth. So like, it's not worth anything now. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, the money, money, the value of money is a really interesting topic, especially today with things like our money not being backed by gold anymore and things like Bitcoin, like the value of currency is only as valuable as people believe it to be valuable. Right. Right. It's also just like power. (laughs) People only have power because we believe they have power. That's it. If everyone just stopped believing they had power, then nothing would happen. Um, it's so crazy to think about. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, it was a funny quest for me. I was like, I did all this for gold. And I was like, what are we going to do with the gold? <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't know. Right, um, right. But, but in Fallout 76, important. yeah, there's, there's gold bullion. You can use it to buy stuff yeah. and unlock some things. Um, which is cool. But also, uh, I think it's totally, like, it absolutely makes sense that in this scenario where the bombs are dropping and they need to, do something part of the plan for the united states was to put their gold in a vault like it like, I'm like that was on the priorities like mm-hmm. i i see it mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's pretty funny um so yeah i mean that's the whole that's all of that and then you know she wants you to make sure that everyone's in on making the gold work uh in order to do that they have to get into vault 79 so it's another quest for you to convince the raiders and the settlers who you've already inoculated so they kind of like you yeah have you done this have you done that part yet? together i've only gotten past professor bot okay oh so you've so got that's... you've got a bunch of stuff still to do with raiders or settlers yeah do you know if you're going to go raid alert raiders or settlers the first time i have you met so... either of them yet yeah, I've done all the inoculation. They both okay. like me right now. Okay, okay, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Although at one point I thought a settler was a bad guy and I beat them. Like, I, <laughs> I may have killed them. And, uh, oh, no, you're not a bad just, guy. I just murdered you. Oh, I no. was screaming and I was, like, talking to chat. And I was just, like, autopiloting. <laughs> uh-huh. And I, I killed, like, three settlers. And I was like, oh, <laughs> no. <And> so, <laughs> so you're going I raider. I guess I'm a raider. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like raider. Um, activity to me yeah. well all right laney we know where you're uh where you fall on this stuff um Woo. so let's so let's wrap this up laney what do you think do you think you would make the sacrifice that she made in choosing her career path or personal safety or whatever in in choosing to go into vault 76 and take that job and having to give up um, evan because that's a lot of questions in one. Well, well here's, here's, <laughs> here's the scenario, right? She doesn't know for sure that the war is going to happen. She doesn't know for sure that the bombs are going to drop. She just knows mm-hmm. that she has the potential to work in Vault 76 as the overseer or to be placed into Vault 101 and potentially get her spouse, boyfriend, whoever he was at the time, in the vault with her. Right? So. So it's like... Overseer? I have something else I think I can add. Uh-huh. Uh, actually, to make it even more complicated, that I just thought of. So I know that she knows that experiments are going on in the vaults. Right. Obviously. Right. But I don't know if she knows what experiments are going on in which vault. Right. That might so not be. Sh- would you be in charge of the experiments, or would you be one of the people experimented on? Is another one of those. Right. Dilemmas. Yeah. So it might have also felt safer for her to go into something she knew she was doing, because mm-hmm. you could also argue that if she went into Vault One Hundred One mm-hmm. with Evan. And she didn't know what the experiment was, and it was really awful. That would also be an awful thing. It would right. be better for her to keep Evan out of it. Right. So, are you saying so you would have made knows? the same decision she made? I. <sighs> that like, sorry, Evan. You're just gonna have to. We don't know the bombs are gonna drop. You're you'll probably be safe out here. If they do drop, I'll be safer in here as the overseer of this vault because at least I'll be in charge. I mean, it's it's there's a lot of variables. Yeah, I don't know. It is a it is a difficult decision. Would you yeah. Okay, so let's let's 
let's reduce it down to would you be able to give up a somebody you love in a situation <laughs> as dire as that would you be able to separate yourself from them to, i think if i had to if i knew that like I don't she know. If I was there's a like, lot of ifs. She doesn't know. know anything, right? She doesn't know yeah. the bombs are going to drop. She doesn't know what necessarily what the experiment is going to be. All she knows well, is... Well, if the bombs don't drop, then it's not a problem. To give them up? Other than the, if they, the heartbreak Because then part. it's possible that... Right, right. That would be awful. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's tricky. It's, a, it's really... Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that's so good about these games is that the dilemmas are really tricky. And... I think that this is another one of those things that people don't give Fallout 76 enough credit for is that these kinds of stories are in the game. Like we right. get these kinds of dilemmas. Like people are like, oh, I love Fallout New Vegas because of these kinds of dilemmas, right? Like the terrible situation that could have gone bad that, both ways. What was that? I think part of it's that like it's different to play through a situation like this versus I just observe it. Mm -hmm. um, doing playing the game and like having the holotapes is interesting because it's like you're not you're not seeing them happen in front of you yeah you're not right. in them you're just listening to them which is totally fine people listen to podcasts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um well a lot of the, the stuff different. a lot of the stuff that people like about like say uh new vegas are the stories about the backgrounds of the characters that they've met like when, when they That's come true. to learn that you know uh you know i don't there's not one that you know i don't know we'll just pick house that Mr. House, like the the interaction with him in the game is fairly limited. He tells mm -hmm. you, you need to go do this and you need to do this. But it's when you finally learn his background and how important he is that all of a sudden that becomes, it shines a completely different light on it, right? Um, uh, especially some of the characters in the expansions for Fallout New Vegas are, are very interesting because of the things that happen to them before you meet them and who they are and their, you know, their goals and the things they're trying to achieve because of their, their past. Um, which in a lot of ways is a lot like the overseer she's yeah. she's gone through this very difficult time in her life and she's come out and she's still alive and she has goals and you're helping her to achieve those goals it's it's you know there's a lot here that's very similar they're just it's just a little bit different she's not as dark as some of these other characters are you know she came out of this that's terrible true. situation and she's still trying to do what's best for society or what she, be she believes is also best any st any stigma for people who have played the game i think it is a whole other thing like you didn't you didn't get to meet her until recently mm -hmm. um that's something that was added later right sorry right um and so it is also different like the connection you might have with the character that you do get to meet right versus one that you don't i think that all plays into it a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. anyway it's interesting it, it's it, there's but the stories are really good the stories are good um yeah so I'd love to hear what people think, uh, whether you're in chat or whether you're listening um, on podcast at home or on YouTube or wherever. I'd love to hear some thoughts on other characters from Fallout 76 that you would love some more background on, because there are some really interesting stuff. I've touched on a few of them. We talked about Taggarty. We talked about some of the characters that you don't actually see in the game. But there are a lot of cool characters that you meet in the games. Some of the Raiders I'm super excited to get to because they're just super interesting characters. Uh, but there's there's people all over the place. So let me know what other things from Fallout 76 you'd like to know. There's even history to some of the places and some of the things that happened in specific places or the different groups, the responders. How did they come about? What happened to them? Those kinds of things that would be really cool to lay out. And I think we'll set a... Uh, a very good foundation for people, especially going into this year with new content coming out and the things that we're going to be seeing revealed for 76 over the next year. So um, lots of fun stuff to go over. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Lainey, thank you for, for going over this with us. And is there anything you've got going on? Are you streaming again? I know you've been moving and unpacking and doing all sorts yeah, of stuff. Yeah, so I did my first stream back two days ago. Uh -huh. uh, we did another one today, so I'm back in. Yeah. Cool. Well, cool. how's that? How's that going? Everybody happy to have you? Yeah, it's been nice. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, I've been streaming during the days while I work on stuff um, and playing some games. I I'm gonna play some more Fallout. I did some Fallout this afternoon, and then eventually my game crashed, and like my whole entire computer just took a dump on me. Um, oh no! It was fine. The whole thing just locked up, and I just had to restart it. So nothing's broken. It's just sometimes that happens while you stream while doing Fallout seventy six. For me, I don't know. Um, and you know, it, 
It was fine. Uh, but I, I got to record what is going to be another episode of the Adventures of Captain Robots. So that'll be coming out on the podcast uh, pretty soon as a bonus episode. And hopefully I'll be doing some more of those as well. So if you guys are interested in hanging out with me during the day or in the afternoons, I'll be working on stuff or streaming games. I've also I've also been streaming. You're going to love this, Lainey. Skyrim VR as <laughs> the Naked Wizard. Uh, I'm trying to see if I'm not actually naked on the stream because that would not be legal. Uh, but I mean, I guess it's legal, but Twitch would not like it. Um, anyway, but but the wizard himself is naked, and that means uh, that's a kind of a big deal in Skyrim because most of your magicka regen comes from your robes, right? Your regen bonuses come from your robes. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. You're right. So I don't have I have very little armor. So the most I can do is wear a hat and shoes. Because I figure if you saw somebody wearing a hat and shoes, but nothing else, you'd still be like, why are you naked? Right? You'd still say that. So It's weirder, actually. <laughs> it is a little bit weird, yeah. So I, I have a hat and shoes, and then I can also wear jewelry, like rings and, and, and you know, necklace or whatever. Um, You're like a pencil. <laughs> like a pencil, right? There's something at the top and the bottom and nothing in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not Donald Duckin. I'm not doing the wear a shirt and no pants thing. It's, it's just hat and shoes. Uh, so, yeah. We're, I'm... I'm about five levels in at this point. I'm doing the College of Winterhold stuff to see if I can unlock a bunch of spells that I'll probably need in order to beat the end game stuff. But it's tough. Like fighting some of these enemies, like the Charis, like going underground, running into a Charis is very difficult. They're hard to fight, well, especially when we don't have any armor. Like they just take chunks of health out of you and you just die. <laughs> it's hard. Um, but it's a lot of fun in VR because everything is scary and then... Uh, the other thing is that Lydia always creeps around behind you and I have mods that make the lights uh, darker but like the actual light sources like shine shadows and things so most of the dungeons are actually very dark except for the light sources and I'll just turn around at some time some point and like, Lydia's like standing there in a shadow like underneath like an opening and I'm like oh Lydia stop don't do that and she's just creeping on me she's just watching me the whole time because that's what they do they just watch you like so creepy anyway um, I'd love for you guys to come join me on that stuff. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Robots Radio. But we will be back on Monday next week. Should be normal Hello. time. 9 p.m. Yes. Eastern. 6 p.m. Pacific. For some reason, my brain derped on the difference between Eastern and Pacific. It's three hours, right? 9, 8, 7, 6. 6 p.m. 9 p.m., 6 p.m. Eastern Pacific. Anyway, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, Lainey, I've broken Lainey's brain as well. Have a good <laughs> night, and until next time, try not to drop bombs on other people and disappoint the overseer. Don't drop bombs on your moms. Don't drop bombs on your moms. We'll see you later. Have a good one. To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.